Hi guys, so here we are at the Gripen Atelier where we're building the beautiful Jumeira and today I'm going to show you a little bit under the skin of the car, the drivetrain of the Jumeira, the history behind it and how it all came together. So what we're looking at here is the light speed transmission from the Yesco. This was completely revolutionary when we decided to do it, to remove actual shifting mechanisms from a gearbox, compounding gears three times three, getting into nine gears, using these extremely small hydraulic clutches, avoiding flywheel to have the fastest revving engine in any production car and the fastest shifting gearbox in any production car. Some of you have heard the, the shifts of the Esco and the revs of the Esco. fast and exciting that is and then we have nine gears so you can cruise on the highway at very low rpm very comfortably and then shift down three four gears at the snap of your fingers faster than any other gearbox before it and get straight into the power band it just transforms the way our v8 engine feels like it just comes it's an otherworldly experience i would say and, and just talk to the people who've experienced and they i'm sure they will tell the same story um, it's extremely compact. I mean, for a nine-speed gearbox plus a reverse, uh, actually then 10 gears in a way with the reverse, it's, I mean, you see how compact and short it is. It means that, and this is the center of the rear wheel, uh, the rear wheel is back to here. It's all within the, the, the kind of the center of the car. Nothing sticks out back. It just gives this mass concentration, which is amazing, and very, very low, low center of gravity. I mean, here is the center of the, the crankshaft, this is the input shaft of the gearbox, this is equal to the bottom of the car. So this is how close the crankshaft is to the bottom of the car. I'm pretty sure it's the lowest mounted engine in any production car. And we can do that as we have no flywheel that take up so rotational space. And this is the center of the rear wheel. You can see the height difference here. So we, we had this amazing technology that panned out better than we could ever hope and, and creating a character of a car that is yeah, I'm no better way of describing it than otherworldly compared to anything else I've driven. And, and we were developing the Jumeira and uh, had, had a completely different drivetrain there uh, with, with direct drive and one gear, which is amazing in its own right. And as many of you remember, we managed to squeeze in the V8 and the LST transmission, turning it into the light speed tourbillon transmission in no space. I mean, we have a rear seat in the Jumeira. Um, and we managed to maintain the luggage space and everything else, even though we completely transformed the technology base in the car. So if we walk over here, we will see the light speed tourbillon transmission. And as you can see, it looks quite different. It's very different looking actually. But internally, in this section here, it's actually very, very simil similar internals. A lot of lessons learned clutch technology, gear technology, everything is very, very similar in this center section. But as the engine sat closer to the rear axle, I mean, you have the output shafts of the drive shafts here and the engine sitting in here, we had to come up with this never seen before type of transmission. Also considering we have four wheel drive, we have an output shaft here as well for the front axle. So this really took some brainstorming to wrap our head around and to actually wrap the gearbox around the engine, so to speak. It is really shrink wrapped, as you see. It's, it's, it's uh, a wild construction in many ways. And, uh, but fundamentally, it works the same way in the gearbox itself. It's nine forward gears, same gear ratios. Actually, no reverse. We don't have a reverse here. It's electric reverse on the front axle. So we could save one gear and one clutch. So actually this one only has six clutches instead of seven. Three times three, nine gears going forward in compound, three times three. No reverse clutch, no reverse gear. No starter motor as that one actually has because we're starting with the electrical motor on, on the drivetrain. And um, uh, yeah, we actually don't have a, a differential on this one as well. You can see the differential here on the, on the LST. Here we just have a bevel gear. 
And then we have a shaft going out here. And then we have a hydraulic clutch here and then hydraulic clutch here before the, the, the cassettes, as we call them, the side transmission that moves the power from in front of the engine to straight over the axle of the engine, the middle of the engine. And what this enables is that we get torque vectoring from these clutches. Um, forward torque vectoring by opening and closing these clutches, we can lock them to have sort of a welded rear axle for, for kind of a maximum takeoff capability. And then we can torque vector with cornering. And in combination with a custom developed braking system, we can also torque vector with the brakes. We have full torque vectoring rear axle without any electrical motors or anything which is quite amazing. And equally, if you come over around here, you can see the height of the crankshaft is as low as in the Yesco from the ground um, compared to the output flange to the drive shaft, which now sits kind of on the middle of the engine. As you can see over here. So here we have the light speed tourbillon transmission with the hot V8 engine. And here you can see why we had to completely rebuild the engine to have the exhaust in the center, not on the side, because this gearbox cassette is right next to the cylinder head. You can also see how sunken in the engine is compared to the center of the rear wheel. It's just such a low center of gravity, it's unbelievable. And you saw the output shaft from the gearbox comes out here into a rotating carbon fiber prop shaft that sits in this carbon fiber uh, torque tube that translates the power from the engine to the front axle which has two hydraulic clutches and a bevel gear no differential so we get torque vectoring here as well but we get augmentation of our dark matter electrical motor we have yeah up to 1250 newton meters of torque and 600 kilowatt from this compact beast of an electric motor that we develop in-house together with our six-phase David inverter uh, and together with the torque vectoring uh, output unit, we call this the Bulldog. Why the Bulldog? Well, it's very compact and very powerful like a Bulldog. The size and weight of this compared to the output is unparalleled. It's just tiny and lightweight. So, what does this dark matter do here in this car? Well, it does several things. I already mentioned, when you reverse, we open up a clutch here and we spin the front axle in reverse and the rear of the gearbox idles. What is very cool here, and uh, which is the first in the world, is that with one electrical motor in a four-wheel drive car, we can have four-wheel drive torque vectoring in pure EV mode with one electrical motor. As we have a shaft going out here to the differential, not differential, the bevel gear to the clutches for torque vectoring together with the brakes. Carbon prop shaft through the torque tube can send the power of the electrical motor through the transmission out to the rear wheels with or without the combustion engine running. We can also choose to run the combustion engine only on the front wheel with torque vectoring, only on the rear wheels with torque vectoring, or four-wheel drive torque vectoring with only the combustion engine, or have them working together for hybrid drive, four-wheel drive, four-wheel torque vectoring with one electrical motor and one combustion engine. That has never happened before. So it's about minimizing complexity and components and get maximum functionality out of this. So even though there are a lot of components, it's much less than you would normally need to get this type of functionality, meaning full functionality, anything you can dream of. That's what really sets this drivetrain apart and it makes me so proud to be able to show it to you in this finished state going into one of our test cars. And now we're going to have a look at this similar type of drivetrain, a test Jumeirah drivetrain on our four-wheel drive, four-wheel torque vectoring chassis dyno, so follow me. Yeah, so now we're in at our chassis dyno. Uh, you might have seen it before. It's a very extreme four-wheel drive, four-wheel torque vectoring test equipment, mainly for cars. But right now we have put the complete Jumeirah drivetrain 
on, uh, on sort of a bed that we can roll in and out. So we can drive the drivetrain like it's in a car in different driving scenarios without the actual car. So it's really easy to work with and change things and try things around. And it's a setup we came up with a few years ago and it's been very, very helpful for our development. So I'm here with Alex and Dimos, who's uh, part of the development team and, and, and running this equipment. And uh, would you say, yeah, what do you have to say about it? <laughs> I mean, it's been very helpful for the, for the integration of all the software. I mean, as you know, it's a very complex drivetrain and torque vectoring and that sort of thing. Having to, being able to measure the torque exactly at every wheel is, is paramount for, for the control strategies. Absolutely. I mean, there are so many driving scenarios that can be utilized. As you mentioned, torque vectoring, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive. Yep. You can, of course, drive the whole car on just one wheel with electric propulsion or combustion propulsion or combination. There's just an endless amount of opportunities uh, with the excitement of the nine speed transmission with this lack of mass and flywheel and have the sensation of the ESCO. Uh, yeah, something different, I guess. Uh, yeah, well, good job, guys, and uh, keep it up. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode where we will show you more Jamira drivetrain tech.